What is going on, everybody? You're McLaren's Peach Out World Champion coming at you with part two of our series of how to play RP Law, how to beat Sakazuki, and this is all about the 8K strategy and diving into that. So for this one, give you guys a little bit of a middle of the road build which is all about the heart pirates so this build all in on the heart pirates which is our leader centered around the search law so it lets you use the film law as well and then our cards down here and i've been testing out this beppo which has got the one on attacking ability but i mean you can switch them out for someone else if you want and then we're gonna be running gamma knife in this build because it's searchable with search law so we can kind of hit little combos here and yeah, search law in this build, good against everybody except removal decks. So against Sakazuki, a little tough because Sakazuki, when you're playing them, will target your when attacking like cards first, making priority. So that is Beppo here, Zoro, and this law. However, against everyone else, when attacking is you're very strong and very good because again, only the removal decks are going to be able to get rid of them. But yeah, we're going to jump in, 8k strategy on this one. What that means is, obviously, assume you're going to be going first against uh, Sakazuki, and this one, this build gives you the options now. So our, you can go into the three-four because we have plenty. We have plenty of three costs, and we got the again. Obviously, we're always going to have our fours right here of uh, the boys and Beppo. So you get any of your three costs. It gives you the option of that. However, you can also now in the eight K strategy. Instead of just going for it on all all in on that, if you do 8K strategy, what that means is turn one, obviously you pass turn two, you're gonna have your three Don, and then instead of dropping the three four, you put all three Don on law, get the guaranteed life hit, and then wait for them, see what they do their next turn, they'll probably attack you, you take that, and then your turn after that then allows you to drop two characters. You could do two fours you want, a three and a four. I would recommend two fours of anything. And especially if you can then hit the blocker law ability and then drop one of these, it's very, very good for the in the 8K. But any of the four, like double fours is the strongest, but you can get get away with whatever. Because again, you just want to exhaust their resource from the hand before we can kind of wear them down over time. But yeah, that is the, the 8K a little intro. So let's dive into it so I can break it down and show you guys what I mean. All right, so opening hand reads for the 8K strategy is going to go kind of like this all depends on your build but what you're gonna want is ideally a four cost plus the boys or Beppo that's like the the best option right there but any character works plus them because uh, basically what you're going to be doing is uh, the three cost a little bit more risky assume definitely getting removed however if you have the th a three cost plus the four it does free up a little bit extra Don for your upcoming turn three but overall, opening hand reads, depending on your deck build, say four, the four cost heavy builds, this probably benefits a little bit more because it gives you a little bit more variety. And in part three, the deck build I'm going to show you guys will definitely be leaning towards that. So that way you can then refer back to this as well with the, whatever build you got going on and be able to hopefully ideally plug and play like your build into these strategies and then be able to develop from there. But yeah, opening hand literally any character three four costs plus our regular combo is what you're looking for to be able to pull off the 8k strategy all right so into the gameplay our opening hand we get beppo and we have two four costs with our film law and blocker law so the rest of it we're just going to end a turn and then we'll just jump into sakazuki because you know from part one what their play is here and they do not have brand new which is huge so that gives us a three and here is the most important part so turn two, what you're going to want to do is literally just draw, take all three of your Don, throw it on Law, and we're going to attack them for 8k. And then, unless they're just absolutely insane, they're going to take the life damage. Like, uh, it is makes zero sense for them to waste anything trying to block this, because it just burns the, them out of cards from their hand, because they don't know what we're bringing for the next turn. So yeah, you just throw all three Don on Law, pop them 8K, and that is the where the name comes from for the 8K strategy, because turn two, you drop them, 8K, bang, and that's what we're going for. So 
there's that and now let's uh, jump into and see what Sakazuki does all right so we'll throw our three down onto our leader and attack them directly let's see what they do they take the life hit and the end their turn and now we'll jump into what will be Sakazuki's turn too so this will be an interesting combination so a bit different than what to expect from the 3-4 because uh, we have no characters on the field here so they are not going to play any of their events they're not going to play any of their characters with the on play effects like no Rob Lucci stuff like that the only characters I would assume that you're going to see from them would be the brand new search if they didn't get it turn one to drop it here or a Borsalina blocker or Kuzan those are pretty much the the only options unless they're playing feeling like real wacky with the something else those are like the three main things to expect here on the AK strategy so look for one of those then if they don't have those other Intel for you is they'll just attack you for however much and if they attack you without playing any characters or anything that is Intel that they don't have those three options more than likely so that is a uh, stuff you can take to progress in the game and just kind of like I feel like decent assumptions that you're able to make just based on like a, what to expect from your opponent and everything all right so let's see what our opponent does here with their the four Don so they're gonna just right away go for it nine on five and we're gonna take this no matter what they attack with always take this because we want to get the life hit and this will then pivot us into the turn three but regardless what they attack with this turn you always want to let them hit because we need the extra cards because we don't have the draw that they do so early game it's big for us just to get the extra characters and stuff because it just opens up our options to be able to continuously overwhelm them because we're about to put it all on the table basically with turn number three so turn three this is where everything is about to open up again turn three is also going to be like the most pivotal turn of the game kind of decides how things are going to go but ideally so you're going to be starting out with five don uh if you have gordon and otama huge because that allow you to take out whatever they put out so if they put out the borsalino or kuzan you can get them out of there immediately and then that that will leave you with the four don so then you can also kind of scheme around depending on stuff because if you run film law you could also, if they only have the Kuzan, which is like the 5k you drop film law, stuff like that. You just have to evaluate what's in your hand, make the little adjustments from there. But ideally, though, with the 5, you'd be able to use Gordon Otama, still play a 4. And then whatever they have, you're going to like shambles it out with your leader ability. Then we're going to bring in either Beppo and or the boys there. And you can kind of, ideally, you just kind of go what you feel with uh, what's in your hand and just make the adjustments and stuff from there but then you're gonna have the two characters out which is huge because the two characters and doing two four costs is a little bit more beneficial just because it puts a little bit more like pressure on Sakazuki of needing the stuff to remove them but however do not get upset if things get removed because uh, it's a, to be expected like you're we're a removal deck, they're a removal deck, and this is a battle of removal. <laughs> so, like, do not be upset if your stuff is gone. Like, you need to expect that whatever two characters you put out are going to be gone. And you have their next turn. You just plan for that, that they're going to be gone. And that's the mindset at least I put in. I always expect my opponent to have, like, a decent hand because of... Uh, I know what their like their setup is. We know what Sakazuki setup is with Rob Lucci with the Great Eruption, the Hound Blaze. So I expect that to be in their hand, and then you're able to then just kind of work backwards process of elimination depending on what they play and what they do, and that they won't have those cards in their hand. So again, in this game, they haven't played brand new, so you're then to expect that they might not have brand new in their hand. So that opens things up with the options, and then going into the turn three. I'm expecting them to have Rob Lucci. I'm expecting to have the great eruptions and stuff like that. And then that's what's expected from their hand. And then, however, if they don't play those cards, then you know you, they don't have that. So that's how you're able to kind of just work and play off on what your opponent does and does. 
and that's just my mindset. I always expect my opponent to have like a good hand or potentially their best hand to continuously remove the characters I put out on the field. And that way it just puts me in the mindset of then when that doesn't happen, then I'm able to just absolutely kind of like pounce and change for, like my plan from there. But that is like my mindset at least so if I can hopefully explain that <laughs> well enough for you guys. And at least how I approach the turn three when I'm playing Sakazuki is I just expect whatever two characters I put out are going to be gone, but it's okay because need them at, to get rid of the resources in their hand because we need to burn them out of their re cost removal stuff to be able to win this game. And it's going to happen at some point. So turn three, playing the two characters will force that into their move. So let's uh, jump in, back into the game. All right, so here we go. We don't have anything to worry about, so we get to save that extra Don, so I don't need to use it on Otama and stuff. And this is beneficial because it lets me know that they don't have, ideally, like the Borsalino and the Kuzan. So we're going to attack them, just the five on five. But we can draw out the 2K, which is very, very big. And I'm going to use this card action, bang with law to discard the two which is pretty big and pretty massive as well and now we're gonna minus our three bring in the boys here and things are looking good things are feeling grand and basically the reason I did that the reason again you want to make the the adjustments based on your hand so blocker law has the ability you minus one Don it's a little bit risky because then you're I invested like four Don so which is the equivalence of like the two turns basically that turn but with blocker law if your opponent is above seven cards minus one trash two cards from their hand and for us it's actually pretty pretty strong because we got to send hound blaze and rob lucci to their trash absolutely massive because turn three for me i always expect them to play rob lucci so us trashing that and Hound Blaze, which is their other, like their bottom decker with the event card is massive, can be game changing if you go for the strat. It is, though you do have to invest that extra Don. But for me, always worth it. And the reason why I attacked first is because they had the eight cards and I wanted them to be able to like burn something. Cause then it gives you a higher chance of getting rid of their key cards is if they if they have over seven attack give them to burn a counter and then do that so that way you know they have a higher you get a higher chance of getting rid of some of the key cards and we hit the the, the like the perfect removal of uh, getting rid of rob which is massive and then you get to bring in uh r plus don so whoever you bring out in is very beneficial so we get the two back there so we're sitting at the three I leave the one as a little bluff just because uh, I run rad beam and I like to leave one sometimes just as a bluff that it may have it and try to get your opponent to maybe potentially invest stuff because uh, regardless there it's gonna draw out something with attacking and yeah it just looks good and then sets us up for the next turn to be back at the the kind of the five dawn the, uh, the very key operating window for us so let's uh, jump into and see what Sakazuki does. Okay, so Sakazuki turn three, they're gonna have the six Don, and Rob Lucci is four. So I always expect, no matter what, that Rob Lucci is coming turn three. That is in my mind, and then we just go from there if they play him or not. So they can potentially, if they have the the good setup, the remove both your characters, especially if you had to do a three and a four. The last turn they'll definitely probably remove both of them because uh they use great eruption and then if they have anything else but they can also like attack as well to you get one of your characters down the minus one but if you have the two four costs out though then they need like the perfect hand to be able to get rid of both of them right here which is massive because then again it puts a big pressure on and for me just like statistically and stuff, uh, if they have the perfect hand to get rid of both of your four costs, then then they do. There's not much you can do about it. And but overall, most more than likely, they probably won't. And you're able to just kind of play around that and 
ideally if you can come out of this turn with one character then that's that's a win straight up because it sets you up to be able to then attack for two characters your next turn which is massive and they'll probably only again have like rob lucci out and that's the only character i would expect so which is at 6k and then depending on your hand just get ready to try to then remove rob on the next turn but yes yeah, sakuzuki turn three how they're going to set this things up and then also why it too it is very pivotal to always bottom deck rob lucci is because if you ko rob they have cards to recycle from their trash and they can then get like uh the black like uh, black characters what is it three to seven with rebecca and stuff like that so they can bring uh those back and but if you bottom deck rob then they can't do that they can't get cards out of the trash so that's always a key thing because then that limits the usage of those cards as well if you bottom deck rob so that's my other like big tip always try to bottom deck rob because it makes it so then they have to draw another rob to be able to beat you like multiple they need multiple robs to be able to pull this off and that way they can't get one back from the trash so always bottom deck rob but yeah this is going to be the turn three layout for them expect them to lower your characters down and then if they can they'll drop rob to get rid of both of them if they can't get rid of both potentially hound blaze as well because uh both hound blaze and rob meet the conditions of like the minus just needing like two or lower so expect one of those and yeah pretty simple pretty straightforward but it is brutal because uh, you could lose your characters and that is very frustrating to deal with but again for me i'm always expecting to lose them like if they have an amazing hand you could be losing two <laughs> like each turn like turn three you could lose two characters turn four you could lose two, two characters but we just have to keep up that pressure because eventually again you just need like the one turn where they can't where they can't remove your characters and then it's game on and you're all good to go so let's jump in and see what sakazuki does against us in this one all right so here we go six don see what they got again we have made a key play potentially game winner earlier by dropping law to get rid of a han blaze and a rob lucci from their hand which is just massive because again there it is both of those and the han blaze so they got the great eruption expected so that gets law down and then let's see what they go to from here they have another han blaze all right so they send uh, our law to the bottom of the deck and they're gonna attack us straight up for just eight on five. We gotta take that because that's uh, nothing we do. We get a Gordon, which is massive for potential later on. And they throw down the Barto blocker. Very, very interesting. So that'll lead us into turn four. So that, while well, them playing the blocker is big because them throwing down a blocker that quick means uh, they don't have their stuff. And we did get rid of their big combo of rob so got a little rng luck there with our law blocker ability big time big help out but they still got rid of one character which is it is what it is as expected you're losing at least, again on turn three with this strategy you're losing minimum one if somehow they don't remove them then they have a horrible hand and you're you got the the RNG gods on your side if that happens, but minimum one. I always expect two though. That's uh, just the, my mentality because then when they only remove one, you're like, oh, then you get the up. So now they only have the the Barto blocker down, who's within range already. So I don't have to in invest, and that leaves us an extra down to kind of play around with and stuff like that. But before we jump into the rest of this game, let's uh, jump into our little little cheat sheet notes for you guys so that way uh have a quick little summary of the game plan all right so the 8k turn guide here the beginning of the game again you're looking for a balance of characters literally anyone and then you want beppo and the boys there but uh again i recommend if you could do this with two four costs very very good and then if you get any kind of your you just need one and then ideally you can draw the power reducers from there but you just need one in the beginning that's your optimal hand then turn two super simple you just put the three down on law and then you can attack them directly then turn three again i would expect a kuzan or a borsalino to be on the board if not the probably a brand new will be remaining there 
Um, use Gordon Otama is like the, the most optimal to use because they're only one. Because you're going to be sitting at the five Don. And that leaves with the four. So then you can still drop two four costs regardless. Uh, but then, yeah, attack with your leader though before you kind of get into that. Just to try to draw things out. And then turn four and after. You got to be relentless. We got to be able to keep up on board control. Again, removing their key cards. Rob Lucci got to go to the bottom deck so they cannot recycle from the trash. Stuff like that. And then just keep on, if you can, bring in two characters a turn. Big key. Just We got to wear them down and burn them out of rem removal costs. Because, again, we're just trying to get that one turn where they can't have the way to take out like our characters like from costs. And then we're able to attack them. And then once we get the leg up with bodies on the field, there's not much they can do. So yeah, quick little pros though. This is definitely the most balanced strat, and it's the one I recommend pretty much with like any build you do. This one is pretty straightforward because you can do it with any build. Uh, it also it allows you to kind of go further out in the game because it's not super aggro aggro. So like the three four strategy, you got to commit to that, and you got to go like quick. So that puts a lot of stress on you and to be able to trust in like what you're going to be drawing and stuff like that. So if you don't have the confidence and especially if you don't play like an aggro build, I wouldn't super recommend going all in on the 3-4. I'd more recommend kind of this 8k, especially if you're playing more 4 cost characters than 3. This is the better one. And then the cons though. Again, it's just kind of character dependent, but all of them are. You get again all of the strats. You are opening game. We want the boys or Beppo, and then just expect getting the mentality because you're going. You're not playing any characters until turn three. Just get the mentality that you're going to lose minimum one, potentially both of them, and just expect that. And then we also too with the strategy is we're battling what's in sakazuki's hand so we're relying on them to burn out or just not have a turn where they can get rid of both of our characters so we're relying on a little bit that of this strategy but overall this is definitely the most balanced one and i think is the best like beginner strategy to go off from and then you can kind of branch out from there especially with your own build and your own cards you like because this one works with any any law build it doesn't matter what you're doing the strategy kind of works especially early game because it just sets you up again turn three you're gonna have the five don so then you can kind of maneuver and stuff from there so yeah here's the turn guide with rp law and that'll be the first little setup again trying to keep it very simple and straightforward just so you can have like a basis to look on and then you build on it yourself and because the uh, that way you can kind of learn from there and then you can learn what cards you like what kind of different combos because again this is all coming from my perspective and if you don't think and perceive things like i do which i mean technically no one else does <laughs> then uh that's why i don't want to go all in on just what i do because uh, i want you guys to be able to like learn yourself and then be able to make the moves and put in the character swaps and stuff like that cards that you like that fits what you want to do but this just gives you the basis of a good little beginning step so you can hopefully grow and build on it from there but yeah that is the turn guide so let's jump back into the rest of the game and show you how it goes all right so here we go back into the game picking up where we left off turn four so I can pull it down the Barto blocker and we have plenty of characters and resources because also with this strategy it just allows you to have more cards in hand normally so we're gonna immediately I'm just gonna throw down film law and just for fun we'll do that and then I get to minus the three regardless give it to them and then we'll bring in Beppo get our one back so now we have an extra one so I get to attack them six and five because now based on their hand we're able to be a little relentless push the pace here we're gonna attack again and it'll be massive and definitely some info so if we get them to burn another 2k which is fine because then it can help us send up set up end game conditions so if they're sitting on eight down now turn four they're gonna definitely attack your rested so they'll always attack your rested character they throw down Toshigi so there's three and Toshigi is gonna let them minus the cost of two and let's see what else they got they got the ice age so perfectly working out for them the math there bringing in rob so there's the other rob that they get and now they're gonna be able to get rid of both of them and then, then this is where it's kind of key though and if you run three cost characters 
I would advise like converting them into kind of like the counters because now they're gonna attack there and you want to keep them up so we have Sanji to keep up one which is very very nice and but the good news is we get them down to two cards in hand so that only sets up there's only so many options they can do here so we got to use the Gordo though unfortunately because uh, even though we do draw a kid I don't want them to be able to go for the game next turn because again we have two life you got to play around our life as well and now we can throw down basically we kind of go into a bunch of different things so you could we have the four if you have the bodies, I would say drop them and then shambles out law or shambles out Rob and then brings something else in. But we have different options here. We have two attackers and playing around this. So they have two life based on the hand. They only have two cards. So we're going to attack them seven, seven and five. And statistically, like they would have to burn both their cards to block this. this is a, a 2K. Again, if you're attacking, you win the tie break. So. Then we're gonna, I'm going to just invest both of these, attack again, 7 on 5. Because if I get them down to 1, or get them down to none, so next turn it leaves the options. And now, we'll shambles out Rob. The reason I'm okay with this is because it just puts, again, the resources here. And we have the 2 life, so I'm okay with leaving Tashigi up instead of attacking because we have the 2 life. And even if they attack with both directly, that's all they can do. They have no rush characters, so... They're going to minus the two. They got Hound Blaze. Get rid of one. They rest. Tashigi. So now they got the, the 8k. And they got to filter out because uh, they need some. They got to get blockers. They got to bring out blockers. This is where, again, we've got the pressure on them now in different ways of putting the pressure on them to needing Rob and their events. And now we've also put the pressure on of then the transition in the late game where then they need blockers. And that's the situations of going against us and for us. So see what they do here. Expect them. Yeah. Attack. Nine and five. Nothing we can do about it. And now it's just all dependent on what they got going on here. They throw down the Rebecca. Which is decent. Again, Rebecca has a zero. So already in range for, uh, for us. They bring in Rob. The brand new search. So they're really trying to drag this one out. Trying to search some more stuff. And get another brand new search. Alright. <laughs> so they're grabbing a 2k. So I know they have. So we know they have the Marine Ford. And we know they have a 2k counter in their hand. So to get rid of Rebecca. I need to use 3. So I, regardless they can block this attack. Either way. So now that's in paying attention to the cards that are revealed. We know they have one event and then we know they have a 2k and then the other two we don't know so we gotta play things smart here we did draw the boys which is nice because then it can set us up because again we have the two life to play around we're gonna get rid of rebecca and get them to burn something regardless here and then we have the option of just attacking and clear the board or vice versa so here we go we got a minus of three. Just straight up get rid of them. We'll bring in the boys, get our two back, and then that leaves us here. So probably want to get rid of Tashigi because Tashigi's the continuous um, cost reducer for them. And we're stacking them six on four. So we know they have the 2k Tashigi, so they'd have to invest two cards of blocking there. So now we just kind of repeat the, the previous turn because of... Uh, what they're going to need to do and do access these conditions because again i mean they could this, you put them in a spot because we have the two i they do have the two brand news but they'd have to invest like a decent amount of don and they have no knowledge of what we have in our hand so if they throw it on rob which is fine because again we have them in late game pressure it doesn't matter since we have them down on life we have the pressure on where they need blockers and to set up the kind of the end game when you get this they only can beat you if they get out two if they have two blockers that's how the game transitions so now they're gonna attack us five on five we're fine with this because uh, again 
they only have three Don. That means they can't play Borsalino blocker. They can't play Rebecca blocker. They can't play the Sabo blocker. So they're attacking again. Five on five. And because I have Otama, we're fine. And we get Gamma Knife to the trigger, which is nice because uh, just going to use that, get the extra Don for next turn, which is massive. And then they're going to attack us six and five. And which knew was coming based on what they're doing. So we use Otama here and block that. And then that's going to set us up. Again, they have no blocker. We know they have the Tashigi 2K, but we're going to WAP them here for a massive 11, and they would need all their cards to be 2Ks. So, and they don't. They have two Tashigis, and that's going to end it there for them and all they can do there. So why that worked out why it was massive, because, again, the way the game kind of transitions and adjusts is early game, Doing the strategy, you're able to put the pressure on to them needing like Rob Lucci and their events to get rid of your cards. And then it transitions. If you're able to keep the pressure up with attacks and stuff and get their life down, the game then transitions into putting the pressure on them to then they need the they need blockers. And fortunately for us, again, the only blocker that's a little tricky is the Borsalino one. Just because on opponent's turn it's technically at 6k, so you need you can't just use the Otama or like the film, which uh kind of stinks, but uh it is what it is. Overall, though, it sets you up for late game. Again, we were able to swing with the 11k and go for the the finish there, which is awesome because again we knew what was in, we knew what two of their cards were based on what was revealed. We knew they had the event and we knew they had one Tashigi. And then the other two, even if they were both 2Ks, they still lose. Because uh, you went in attacking, we had the tie break. So 11, they would have needed all of those to be 2Ks. Which is pretty unlikely. Because also too, end game, things if you want to pay attention to. With their 2K counters specifically, they may have 8. Which is like Suru and then Tashigi. But depending on what they're running, if they have the Barto blocker, they may not have the full Tashigis or Serus. But overall, I would expect about eight cards for them to have of, of the 2K blockers. And depending on how much they've used, like feel free to go through the trash. You can then count down and what the chances are, like end game, of them to have 2Ks. And for me, I'm just trying to set up like the end game conditions where, in my mind, it is very unrealistic and unlikely that they would have that many 2Ks like in their hand and if, if they do then ggs like sometimes that's just how games go especially card games not much you can do with that but more than likely if you set up what your ideal end game conditions are they're not going to have that kind of setup and they didn't they because based on our card knowledge of what they did have in their hand which is very very nice but yeah that is how the game goes the 8k strategy and thank you guys tune in these have been super fun to make like uh, it's been cool to actually go into my notes and stuff and like put the stuff together on screen so hopefully being able to see like the visual aid helps a little bit more because again uh, law is not the easiest deck to use it's very like situational you have to be able to like adapt and adjust constantly throughout the game based on what's in your hand and what's on the field but want to provide just these simple structures and stuff like that especially towards like new players that want to play something different and not just use like the the top meta stuff and yeah this is just how i kind of break things down and view things for me and where i kind of my starting points is once i get something figured out and that's working make that the basis and then can build off them so that's what we got for here but yeah that is the the breakdown and yeah now let's just jump into a regular game and kind of showcase just another example but just full all of our abilities and everything we put together and learned all right here we go against sakazuki let's see what we can do all right we can hit our we're gonna hit the 8k give that a try for uh this one again just for demonstration purposes even though we have a solid combo to do the three four I just want to show like the the options you can do and see how this kind of plays out so they're attacking us five on five 
which is okay. We can take the one, which is very nice. So now we can play very aggro. And then they're attacking us again, five on five. Um, how much do they got? This. Let's block out of that one. And then they got another brand new. Grabbed Hound Blaze, Trash Rebecca, and they have that. Alright, so I'm going to drop two fours. But first off, we'll do this. Use a card action. Bang. Okay, they got Virgo in here. So we got rid of Virgo and a Great Eruption, which is cool. Then... I'll attack them six on five. Already pretty cool. One, two, three. Go to this guy, bring in the boys here. All right, so now, gotta assume they can get rid of both here. With the, what, the stuff that they got. So a Rob would be four. Luckily we got rid of a uh, Great Eruption, so that helps. And they got an Ice Age in here. So they would need another Great Eruption or an Ice Age to get rid of both of them. All right, they're throwing down Rebecca to do Hina. All right, so six on five. We'll take that one, keep that for later times. And then five on five, we give it a one. All right, draw a card, we get an Otama. Okay, also very, very nice. So now how do I want to go about this? Play, let's throw down, throw down Zoro. Use our ability here. One, two, three. Get rid of Rebecca. Bring out Beppo. So now we got three. I got two left. I'm going to keep one for a rad beam. Um, I'll attack them. Actually, let's uh, do Zoro. So Zoro on Hina, five on five. Okay, they take that, which is cool. Now I'm going to attack them, six on five. All right, and then I'll attack... Five on three. Okay. Get rid of everybody there. We got a rad beam ready to go. So if you attack somebody, we can hold off that. Just kind of depends. Only thing that stinks is Zoro's at three. So I gotta assume them. they can get rid of at least two here. If they can't get rid of two, then we're sitting good. Just depends if they have Rob or not. All right, six on five. The reason we have that is for that. I want to keep Otama just in case here. So Borsalino. Actually, kind of okay with that. Which I c And I can get rid of him as well. We can get rid of him and, and keep a Don. Okay. So I'll do that. And then we got Otama as well to get him all the way down. And so then I will be able to attack so with a 6k. So lead off 6 on 5. Alrighty. We'll do 5 on 5. Alright. Attack him again, 5 on 5. Alright, we get rid of 1. We'll do 1, 2, 3. Get rid of this one. Bring this guy out. Don't have any targets here. All right. So they got full 10. See what we can manage. Got another rad beam to keep one of these guys alive, hopefully. They can't get rid of both. They'd have to throw up a lot of blockers. So they trash Rob Lucci. Interesting. Maybe that means they don't have cost reducing unless they have another rob all right attacking no blocker rad beam that we gotta keep our boys up and we we'll just put the pressure on them to need to do some stuff all right so they drop rob so they get rid of these two 
But I mean, it's kind of massive because we keep get to keep this up. All right, Borsalino, and we get Rush Zoro. Um, let's see what we can do here then. I'll attack five, get him to do something. I gotta take the life, select a card to trash. Well, that uh sucks because uh that would have just uh, done some great things for us. And then I could do seven and seven. Oh yeah, there's nothing they could do. Okay. <laughs> well, we had it locked up there. So there you go. 8K strategy. Bang, bang, bang. And how you can... I could have done either one in the beginning there. And we're able to maneuver out of that. Get rid of their stuff. And yeah, that is the 8K strategy with uh, this deck. So putting out another little thing for you guys. Another little example, because uh, that just adds the, in the beginning of the game, it just adds, so now you can refer back to part one, our part one strat, if you want, with the three, four, if you get that, or you can play it safe with the AK, if you want to build off in that as well. So yeah, now you, we got the two main little strategies here, and beating Sakazuki with it is very, very fun. It's very satisfying, like, whichever strategy and whatever deck build you use, beating Sakazuki is cool. Because again, this is the number one deck in the game. Right now, I'm pretty sure it's like right around like 50% or more players are like playing Sakazuki. So being able to beat Sakazuki is huge because no matter like where you go, if, uh, if most of the people are running Sakazuki, if you have the deck that can beat Sakazuki, you're going to do pretty good. Like uh, it just depends on who else you run into. But yeah, that is going to do it for part two of our series how to beat sakazuki how to play law the 8k strategy thank you guys for tuning in this has been pretty fun to make these videos it's been cool to like put in like my notes and stuff so hopefully that's been helping you guys as well to see like a physical representation of like everything and yeah it's been super enjoyable for me to put together something new something i get to be kind of creative with as well and then putting all the stuff together has been fun so yeah thank you guys so much tuning into all this it's been great and I'll see you for in the next one for part three.